Hey everyone, welcome back to episode two of this Linux series. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to actually get started with a Linux operating system. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. There's not necessarily the best way to do it. I'm just gonna talk about some different options. Starting with the absolute most simple way to do this, which is to just use a sandbox website to try out commands. Now, this isn't the best long-term solution, but if you're ever just wanting to experiment with some commands, you can just go online and look up a Linux sandbox, such as this one here from CoCalc. You can run terminal now, and we can open up some project. Eventually, you'll be able to open a terminal here, and you can start typing commands such as ls or pwd, kind of tiny, but you can pretty much follow along using this here. So we'll type clear and that will remove everything from the screen. And now type uname space hyphen a. Hit enter and that's going to tell you what version of operating system this is running. And you can see right here, we are on Ubuntu 20.04.1 Ubuntu. So we'll clear that. So this is a Ubuntu terminal, even though it doesn't look like the Ubuntu operating system, it's still running the same terminal here. It's just the CLI instead of the GUI. So CLI, command line interface, that's the terminal. The GUI, graphical user interface, is when you have all the little buttons and you click them. And an operating system can have both. Another cool website to test out any of these operating systems, and there's a lot larger variety, is this website, distrotest.net. And in here, you can go through all these different operating systems. So for example, we can find Ubuntu. Scroll in. Uh, looks like there's numerous with the name Ubuntu in it. So we'll just go with the default Ubuntu here. And you can go into one of these and hit start. It'll give you a little waiting timer and eventually it's gonna launch this operating system. And you can watch it boot up. Now the cool thing about this is you actually get the GUI as well. When you get to this page here, you can just hit try Ubuntu. And as you can tell, it's, it's a little slow. This is obviously for trying out the operating system, experimenting, might not be something you want to uh, run a web server off of. And this website is nice because there's a ton of different versions of Linux out there. So you can test them out, see which ones you like, which ones you don't like. And once you find the one, then you can worry about installing it locally or on another computer. All right, you can see it's finally done and you can follow along like this. So you can go down to the apps down here. And I'm hoping once we actually get the terminal up, it'll be a little bit more responsive. So you should be able to issue commands here. So just wanted to share that website as well. It's probably not as useful because there's also a time limit. It's slow as crap. And yeah, you really only need the terminal for like 99% of this course. So yeah, just kind of throwing that out there more as a way to experiment with other distributions. Watch your time limit. Don't leave anything important on there until it gets ruined. Uh, but yeah, cool way to try out other Linux operating systems. What the heck? A Hannah Montana Linux operating system? Count me in. Holy crap. Why is this a thing? <laughs> Why haven't I tried this earlier? <laughs> oh my golly. Anyways, where was I? I was getting, I'm getting distracted here. So these are some tools to try out Linux. When you want to install Linux and it actually works pretty good and you don't have to worry about your session getting destroyed or anything. I recommend a virtual machine for Mac operating systems. If you want to run the virtual machine on a Mac, 
I recommend the Parallels software. It's the easiest to use. You just download it and you just literally click through it and it'll install Ubuntu. You don't have to worry about any ISO or anything crazy like that. It does it all for you. The downside is it does cost money after the trial period, so for some of you that's not going to be an option. My next recommendation is actually, uh, I forget what it's called, VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox, I have an M1 Mac and I was having issues getting it running. I don't know if that's related or what, but you can try VirtualBox as a good alternative, which is also what I would recommend if you're on a Windows operating system. So this is VirtualBox and it takes a little bit more effort to get things set up. You're also going to need an ISO for the operating system. So what is an ISO? Well, think about an ISO as a file that represents the operating system. So you can go download Ubuntu and that file type is going to be .iso. You're gonna need that to launch a Ubuntu instance. And you can find that by going to the Ubuntu website, ubuntu.com, and then download from here. Now I actually ended up using Parallels, which I think is by far the easiest, and it's, it runs very smooth on Mac. However, not everybody is going to have that. The last option is if you get that ISO, you can actually flash it to a USB stick using a software like Belena Etcher. So this will allow you to actually install the operating system on a USB stick. Once it's on that USB stick, you can boot your computer to that USB stick. If you go into the boot options when the computer starts, usually you'll hit like F2 or something. You can choose that USB stick and it'll give you the option to install Ubuntu on that system on the solid state drive for that computer or whatever you're running your operating system on. So that's a little bit too detailed for this video, but if you're looking to have Ubuntu installed directly on a machine, then that's the route you're going to want to go. I did a video which was a complete step-by-step -step guide on building a computer, and I'm by no means an expert, so this is like for dummies for sure. Uh, and this will go through the actual process of building the computer. And then part two will be how to actually install the operating system, which you can find on this video here, which literally takes you through that entire process of how to flash a USB stick, and how to install that on a computer. I don't wanna to have to repeat the same thing, so just go ahead and watch that video if you wanna know the details on how to do that. So to conclude this video, because there's a lot of information, if you want the simplest, easiest way to get started, just go to a sandbox environment online. There are a lot of Ubuntu sandboxes. If you want a good solution for Mac, then I'd recommend Parallels. If you want a good solution for Windows, then I would recommend VirtualBox. Or you can install directly on the hardware using a flashing software like Belena Etcher. Now there's another option, which for Mac is also fairly easy, which is you can just use the terminal on Mac because 90% of the commands are gonna be exactly the same. So you can type out all these commands and you can see it's working just fine. That's because we're on a Unix operating system, which is very, very similar to Linux. For Windows, I just probably just download Git. When you install Git, you can also get the Git bash mingw thing. <laughs> so yeah, download Git at git-scm.com. This will allow you to run a lot of the Linux commands on Windows. Or if you don't wanna download Git, you can download mingw right here. That's all I got for you in this video. Stay tuned for the next video. Now that we have it installed, we're gonna talk about how to actually start using it. So that should be pretty cool. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.